so hi, my name is O, and I am leading the gaming analysts team at Pecan AI. Uh, and I'll be speaking about how you can boost your user acquisition and achieve higher player's lifetime value uh, using AI. I joined Pecan about a year and a half ago. I uh, started, started as a data analyst uh, and shortly afterwards uh, started managing the gaming analyst team. Um, my team expertise is on how to use AI-based predictions to achieve better marketing performance. So we mainly work with user acquisition managers and marketing teams uh, within mobile gaming companies. Uh, Pecan uh, was founded about five years ago uh, and is a predictive analytics platform that basically predicts uh, things such as conversion, high value users, uh, lifetime value, uh, where the focus is on the business value and the business usage of predictive analytics uh, without the need for data science and data engineering teams. Um, and all of that eventually is being translated to improvement in business KPIs by using the power of AI. We are here today um, to talk about uh, challenges with user acquisition these days and how you can overcome them using AI. Um, how you can integrate uh, easily AI into your marketing strategy and how we confidentially predict uh, campaign success, uh, including for iOS users, despite uh, the privacy restrictions. And I would like to start with a short overview of the gaming industry from my point of view uh, and the challenges user acquisition managers are handling today. Uh, and it starts, of course, with the macro conditions post-pandemic uh, consumers uh, in all verticals are simply spending less um, and it causes a kind of slowdown in the huge growth we experienced as a gaming industry in the past two years uh, and it applies to changes in markets so the US for example is still a top market but it's becoming more and more competitive and uh, acquiring users is becoming more and more expensive. Um, and it also uh, continues to changes in monetization. So we see an overall decrease in the revenue generated by in-app purchases uh, in, the in the gaming vertical. Uh, and if that's not enough, on top of everything, we are facing the privacy age uh, led by Apple, and it brings heavy, difficult challenges in uh, optimizing and measurement of marketing activities and just adds complexity to basically everything. Um, and it all brings us to the conclusion that these days, positive return on investment is harder to achieve. Uh, and to do that, um, it just emphasizes the need for deep understanding of your data and deep understanding of your player's lifetime value. Um, and it requires focus on long-term goals and long-term KPIs and being able to maximize uh, what you can get from your data um, with less budget. Um, we conducted a research to understand how those challenges are actually reflected in the market. Uh, and we found out that indeed, most of the marketeers are struggling to measure the return on investment when it comes to the campaign and channel level, uh, even though it's super important these days. So we came out with uh, this framework, the Ask, Predict, Act. Uh, and this is how we run predictive analytics. So it starts with a predictive question. Uh, that is actually reflecting a business need. So, for example, a predictive question could be um, which users uh, will churn in the following week? Um, and to answer that, we actually use first-party first uh, internal data of gaming companies, uh, which is something we'll always have 
uh, even though we see uh, privacy restrictions. And this data is going into an automatic pipeline that generates the predict. Uh, so it goes through um, data preparation, training AI models, and eventually generates ongoing predictions that are easily integrated to the systems of action to just make them actionable because we believe that without uh, being able to take actions, you cannot really uh, use that. So it can be uh, DMMP, BI tools, Facebook, Google, uh, all of these, the predictions are just uh, uh, automatically being sent to that uh, to be just ready for use um, by marketing teams. So I would like to show you two use cases of this framework uh, and the way we use it uh, today with our customers. Um, and the first one would be how we predict a campaign return on investment. And the second one would be how we managed using AI to regain uh, iOS users' visibility in the long term. And I would like to start with a real example of a typical app developer that happened to be our customer. Um, and this app developer was running two campaigns simultaneously, campaign A and campaign B in one of the top marketing channels. Um, and the way this uh, app developer measures its campaign performance is as probably you all do. Um, and what he does is looking at the day seven ROAS and comparing it to a day seven target. Um, and the assumption behind it is that day seven ROAS is a good proxy for long-term performance. But the thing is, campaigns are not linear. Uh, and this assumption is in so many cases wrong. Um, some campaigns behave differently. Uh, anyway, in this example, this app developer decided to kill campaign A that did not meet the day seven target and add budget to campaign B that actually met the target. And we continued monitoring those two campaigns' performance over time. And we found out that uh, in the long term, campaign A that was killed uh, actually overperformed campaign B and reached the break-even point much earlier, which means much more profit. Uh, so it means that the day seven decision that was based on descriptive information was the wrong decision. Uh, campaign A is what we call a late bloomer. And you don't want to kill a late bloomer. Those are the best campaigns, uh, the most sustainable ones that actually achieve the highest value over time. Um, and that's the idea behind predictive analytics. You can actually know by day seven, at the right time, what would be the smart right decision and how would campaign behave uh, in the long term. Um, so we actually use what happened up to day seven to predict the long-term lifetime value and ROAS on the campaign level. Um, and that way, app developers can actually make the right decision on the right time. And obviously, time is money. Uh, so uh, once you can make early decisions, let's say by day seven or day one instead of day 30, uh, you can actually save all the budget you keep wasting while waiting for data to be gathered. Um, so uh, it's not only about the right decision, it's al also about like saving that wasted budget. And a question I'm being asked uh, quite a lot is how does that magic works with SCAN uh, and Apple's uh, privacy restrictions? So basically on May 2021, Apple came out with the app tracking transparency policy and basically took away uh, the attribution to marketing channels and campaigns on the user level, uh, which means 
that we lost <laughs> the most critical signals of the most valuable users, um, which made it very hard to uh, make decisions on the campaign level because the ROI became unknown. Um, and as a data-driven industry, it's, it's a bit of a challenge, <laughs> let's say. Um, and it made budget planning to be uh, based on assumptions and early indications and I want to say even sometimes guesses. Um, but what we don't have, what we lost is real numbers, real coherent KPIs we can actually use, monitor over time, compare campaigns. Uh, we just lost all of that. Uh, it obviously had a huge impact on the market uh, and we could see budget shifting from uh, iOS to Android only due to the uncertainty um, and we know that a lot of marketeers feel like those changes actually harmed their marketing performance um, and this is unfortunately only the beginning so it starts with Apple but we will see those privacy restrictions in other platforms quite soon, um, such as the privacy sandbox. So this is how the normal campaign management process uh, looked like. You, as app developers, spend marketing budget on uh, channels. You run campaigns, users install the app, and then you can just uh, measure uh, the impact of the budget you spend. Uh, and you usually do that by measuring uh, long-term KPIs such as day 90 ROAS. And then SCAN came out. Um, and we basically lost that. Today, we are unable to measure the ROAS on the campaign level later than the first 24 hours. That's how it looks like today. Um, and why is that so bad? Because this is probably how your lifetime value growth looks like over time since install. Uh, revenue is generated by user retention and user engagement over time. And 24 hours is just not enough to make any good decisions. And this is where the magic happens. <laughs> we came out with a solution that actually brings back the visibility and optimization capabilities uh, for iOS users uh, in SCAN. So we generate, based on first party data, predictive signals. And those predictive signals are being sent to the SCAN framework. Um, and we can actually generate accurate predictions on the campaign level. So you can know again what's the day 90 ROAS uh, and measure uh, your campaigns as you did before uh, and make decisions uh, based on the actual performance. I mean, predicted, but accuracy and so. And this solution can actually be integrated uh, this way uh, to real uh, dashboards you use for campaign management. And it also provides the marketing channels more signals and more data they can use for campaign optimization, which means one, visibility, and two, optimization capabilities that are much improved than what you have today. Um, and we can actually see uh, those predictions integrated to campaign management dashboards being sent uh, as data to marketing channels and being optimized uh, towards. So to summarize, uh, user, ma user acquisition managers are facing uh, quite a lot of challenges today. Um, but with innovative solutions, uh, there are ways to overcome them. So you can predict campaign returns at an early stage uh, and drive higher LTV uh, on a user level. Uh, and you can also overcome the scan restrictions and Apple's app tracking transparency using AI and regain the visibility and optimization capabilities that were taken away. Any questions?
Thank you.